Welcome everyone, greetings, and welcome to a very special edition of Progressive Discussions. This is uh, pro Progressive Discussions uh, on location in, in terms of my special guest, which happens to be John Starodumsky, the founder and president of Honest Craft Beer Reviews. But, um, and I am, of course, your host, James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, the hardest hitting internet talk radio station on the planet. And uh, uh, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman is not with me to, right now, even though I could call him, but uh, we, we're running a little behind. So um, what I'm going to do is introduce my special guest. John, how are you today? Good, how are you, James? Happy, very good, not bad. It's hazy, hot, and humid here in New Jersey. I know you are in the state of Georgia, and it's probably uh, warmer by you. And uh, I just it, want, it's, to, yeah, it's, it's 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 humid out there, right? It's been uh, it's been extremely uh, warm and humid the past uh, past three or four days. We had a month where it was really nice. We had usually temperatures in the mid seventies, maybe lower eighties. Been a cool evening, perfect for sleeping, but. Past three or four days, we've been hitting the low 90s every day. And while the humidity is not as bad as it used to be in Rhode Island, uh, it, it's still uh, still kind of muddy. So yeah. Well, um, we are um, we are broadcasting this show uh, on right on Memorial Day weekend. It happens to be Monday, Memorial Day weekend, 2012, the unofficial. Beginning of summer, and uh, up here in New Jersey, uh, it is when the beaches open up, and the lifeguards are out there, and people are getting ripped off left and right by the tourist attraction of the Jersey Shore, where they're charging you more than five dollars for a stinking hot dog, and you know, and, and everything else. And yeah. they charge a, they, they charge people cover charge to get on the beach. Uh, they charge you. They, they, they um, uh, extort money out of you uh, to change into your bathing suit because if you're caught changing in a public restroom, you get fined, believe it or not. Pay to park. Wow. Yeah, you pay to park. You got. I mean, people paid over $7 to get on the damn beach last summer. Um, it's crazy. I, I refuse to go to, to a subpar beach and pay all that money, not to mention fighting traffic and, uh, you know, now, do they have in-state rates? And up, up in Rhode Island, we always have. So if you have an in-state plate, you can sometimes get it free or you pay a lower rate. And if you had out-of-state and a tourist, the assumption was you didn't pay uh, the state taxes for, uh, you know, for the upkeep of the, the beaches, which costs, costs money, and I, and I understand that. So residents got a, got a preferred rate. They also had changing stations, changing booths that you could go into and, uh, for that sort of thing. Yeah. But you guys don't have that? Uh, not that I, I know of. New Jersey is kind of corrupt. <laughs> but, so, in other words, the concept of paying and privatizing beaches for business purposes and everything, it, it seems to be possibly a northeastern thing, as opposed to the south, where the beaches are free, pretty much. You know, I, I haven't uh, only been to a couple down here, and, and, and we really haven't had to uh, you know, pay Park or anything like that, but you know, I mean, it, it costs the state money for the upkeep. That's that's a given, um, and they're going to get you one way or another. They're going to get you through income taxes to pay for it, or they're going to get you through you know user fees and and whatnot. Um, and the pay as you go principle. So I don't have a problem with it as long as it's not you know exorbitant and, and it, it's not uh, out of line with what. What it really costs for the maintenance of the of the beach itself. Well, so. you're talking about the, the the general annual beach maintenance, uh, preventing erosion, the the building up the sand dunes or whatever. Yeah, and if they have, you know, sometimes you have like a little palladium or there's there's boardwalks or things like that, and and all of that stuff costs money to inspect for safety issues and you know to replace more out planks and uh, lots of things you know that we probably would never even think of, but. You know, they do cost money, and, and, and it has to be paid for one way or another. Right, so. Right, right. so, okay, now I want to get right to the point. Uh, John Starodumsky, uh, would it be accurate to assume that you are somewhere in the middle class bracket? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I think we are. Our family. Okay. Uh, and uh, 
you being a middle class uh, gentleman and having a family, you are probably uh, more than well aware of the fact that the burden of taxation is on the middle class. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think the middle class and even to a degree, uh, you know, the poor, uh, the poor don't necessarily pay uh, income tax to the, to the federal government. Um, you know, there's fortunately there, for them, there are some safeguards in place uh, that, uh, you know, that protect them, but they do get hit with payroll taxes. They're not exempt from those. And sales uh, taxes, state sales, sales taxes. taxes and other state taxes that, uh, you know, here in Georgia, we actually have, uh, I think, in my opinion, and although it's a reduced rate, uh, there, there, there are uh, taxes on things like uh, groceries, which, uh, you know, come from Rhode Island. And, and, and granted, uh, I'll be the first one to admit that down here, property taxes are far lower, uh, your taxes on vehicles are far lower and such, but, uh, you know, we, there was no, no tax on groceries uh, being, you know, the uh, pretty much the basic uh for, for sustenance of life, right? You may eat. Um, the theory up there was that, that, that there should be no sales tax on groceries because you're just taking you know, yeah. money out of the pockets of the poor, basically. Yeah. And down here, they do uh, usually it's one to three cents, three percent between uh, the state and the uh, and, and the local uh, sales tax on, on groceries. So. Well, up here in the Northeast, of course. We have the uh, heavy-duty uh, taxes on uh, liquor and tobacco, you know, the so-called sin taxes. And uh, we have uh, uh, taxes on freshwater fishing licenses. But down south, like in Florida, there's a saltwater fishing license. So they get you one way or the other. You guys have cheap prices on liquor. We have high prices on liquor up here. So, you know. Yeah, they do. And we have those on, you know, tobacco is taxed uh, much lower down here, obviously, because there, there's a big tobacco industry. Um, and uh, alcohol, alcohol is probably taxed at the same rate, federal tax and state tax. I'm, as a rule, I'm opposed to sin taxes because I think it's just an easy way for one group to, to uh, push their tax burden off to somebody else. If somebody doesn't drink or smoke, you know, they're, they're fine with uh, taxing the guy that does drink and smoke because they're not going to pay those taxes. Unfortunately, most people take that philosophy. Um, but I think if you use those funds to pay for what go to the general treasury, as the federal government and the states do, mm -hmm. then, you know, that, then, look, come on, let's be fair and let's assess those taxes across the board. If you really want to talk about sin tax, you know, let's start taxing the big mess and the whoppers that are, that are uh, you know, leading to the obesity crisis and diabetes and all those other problems. In my opinion, they're just as harmful as uh, um, cigarettes or alcohol. And I'm not saying you should do that. I'm, I'm arguing the opposite. I don't think that, that fast food should be taxed. I just don't think that alcohol and tobacco should be taxed either. So. You're right. You're right. If you're, go if you're going to penalize people that drink and smoke, uh, you should also penalize... Uh, uh, the food industry for selling poison, for selling toxic poison to the to the mainstream. There you go. I mean, it, all goes to, it, it comes down to personal choice. I mean, we all know today, we know the risks of uh, a fatty diet, we know the risks of too much sugar, we know the risks of smoking, and we know the risks of excess of alcohol consumption, given that you know the risks, if you make that personal choice, then... You know, who, who's, who is uh, the government and society to say, well, we're going we're gonna to whack you extra, uh, you know, for that? I, I just don't think that's something we're going to achieve. Right. Well, the trans, ta the trans fats uh, are also more dangerous than uh, some of the ingredients you just mentioned, the partially hydrogenated oils yeah. that is used to increase the shelf life of the so-called supermarket food that mainstream America consumes. And for profit, so they so they, they don't have the uh, the shrink, you know they don't throw away uh, uh, food a, as often as normal, like back in the day when food was healthy and organic. So they, right. they put in preservatives and chemicals and hydrogenated oil increase the shelf life, and people are under the delusion or, or misconception that the Federal Food and Drug Administration and the USDA is out for their best interest. In reality, they're not. They're paid off by the fat cats. The food industry has their lobbyists, just like the oil companies, and they're paid off. Now, what we're what we're talking about now about all these miscellaneous taxes and sin taxes and sales taxes, 
I'm leading up to something. And what I'm leading up to is these are just ways, like you mentioned before a little bit, these are ways to collect revenue without taxing the people that should have been taxed right along like they were during, during FDR, Truman, and Eisenhower. And I'm talking about the elitists, the rich, the fat cats, the top 1%. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And, and you know, it's, it's interesting that you bring that up because there was, uh, last year there was a push here in Georgia to eliminate the income, the state income tax and the property tax. We had a really right-wing, radical, Republican wacko that wanted to do this. And the way he wanted to pay for this was to raise the sales tax. So what do you do? The sales tax is probably the most regressive of taxes that you have because it hits people that spend, um, you know, spend their money to survive, which most of us do. This is why uh, I'm a big uh, opponent of, you know, Republicans are constantly talking about a national sales tax or a value-added tax. So, you know, I mean, what are those taxes going to do? You're going to take a person with, with the so-called fair tax, which is really the most unfair tax that you could possibly have, uh, Herman Cain's 999 plan, I would say if you flip the 999 upside down, you got 666 because yeah. it's the plan from hell, right? So, um, but the bottom line, you know, people that, if, if, if your family makes $70,000 a year, there's a good chance that you're going to spend just about all of that. You might maybe put a few thousand away in savings or retirement plan if you're lucky, uh, you know, uh, but most of it you're going to spend on your mortgage and your groceries and your incidentals and, you know, maybe if you're lucky you can buy the occasional uh, splurge item or something like that. But if we have a, a, a national value-added tax and, you know, the Republicans will tell you, well, this is great because we're not going to take money out of your check anymore. But you're going to be paying this tax, 12, 15, 20 percent, whatever it turns out to be, plus the state sales tax, which is not going to go away because the state still needs money, on everything you purchase. And, uh, they, you know, there's talk about a rebate at the end of the year, but if it's truly going to be revenue neutral, as they say, then that rebate is just, I mean, that, that's a red herring for the fact that, you know, the, the actual rate is going to go up so that they can afford to send you that check. But the guy that makes a million dollars a year and spends maybe 250000 in banks the other seven hundred and fifty grand. well, he doesn't pay a penny on that $750,000. And that's where the thing falls apart because you're having, you know, it becomes so aggressive on those at the bottom end of the equation that it's just, it, it's ludicrous. And, and you know, I, I mean, it, it kind of, it, it would raise the hair on my head if I had him, so. <laughs> well, it's obvious that the rich have not paid taxes in over 30 years. Uh, in the past decade, it was brought to my attention that the top corporations in America, like the oil companies and General Electric, whatever, in the, in the past decade, collectively, they have, they have profited uh, by making uh, trillions of dollars in, in, in profit. They've made trillions of dollars and not paid any taxes at all. And uh, what people have to realize is that these corporations fund uh, our so-called public servants, and I use that term loosely. They fund their, their political campaigns, and, uh, you know, the, that they're bought off pretty much, and the politicians tell us what we want to hear when they're running for election. They feel our pain. They shed a, a crocodile tear every now and then if they're Democrats. And... Uh, and when they get in, everything changes. Uh, this is the this is the worst of the capitalist system. Uh, it is the two parties because those yeah. are, so those with the means of production and those with the most wealth are have been manipulating uh, the tax rates for years now. If you look at the figures uh, since the seventies or at least the eighties, the, the uh, concentration of wealth is uh, going increasingly to the top. Uh, the top 1% and the top 2%, and as you go down, you know, that, that small elite, uh, uh, they're, they're uh, actually, uh, they're doing the best, and, and they've been sucking up uh, an increasing portion of the wealth in the country. So uh, everybody else in the middle class and, and, and the poor are left to fight over what's left, and, and that piece of the pie has been shrinking and is left for the rest of us. And the Bush tax cuts only exacerbated the problem. They made it far, far worse. Um, you know, I, I argue with, with 
uh, Republicans about this all the time because I hear, well, you know, the, the, uh, the, the Bush tax cuts actually improve the economy. I don't see any evidence of that. No. It kind of, actually, the, the biggest, the biggest uh, slap in the face uh, to me um, from the Republican Party, which is increasingly out of step, I think, and, you know, really in this country now, they represent the super rich and just about any, and, and nobody else. Those are the only interests that they really represent because, you know, when, when Obama put through the uh, payroll tax uh, cut, which was intended to be temporary, uh, I'm not so sure it's a good idea for the long term myself, uh, but as a short term stimulus, it was brilliant because it put money in the pockets of those that pay Social Security tax. Now, if you if, if you probably recall, the Social Security taxes end at, I think it's $128,000. After that, we don't pay them anymore. So all of that, that was a great stimulus because it, it went into the pockets of people that would actually spend the money rather than people that are going to bank it and not do anything with it and not help the economy. Well, the Republicans fought, they argued tooth and nail against that every time it came up for renewal. And uh, the only reason I think that it actually went, went through was because uh, you know, the, the, uh, the Democrats uh, just uh, uh, put the Republicans in an inco- uncomfortable position of having to defend raising taxes on the, the poor and middle class when they've been defending, uh, you know, the, the, quite the opposite of uh, uh, not raising taxes on the rich for the longest time. But, um, you know, it, it, bottom line, and I guess I'm kind of a long-winded way where I was going, is the Republicans charged that they had seen no evidence that the payroll taxes were working, which is, which is probably not true, because I think things would be a lot worse uh, than uh, they actually were if we didn't have those in effect, in addition to, you know, some of the FDR initiatives from the Depression, like unemployment and Social Security, that probably kept this Great Recession from being a depression as well. But, but at the end of the day, you know, I mean, back to the original point, uh, they may argue that about the payroll taxes, but I would argue that the Bush cuts have actually uh, not, not helped stimulate the economy at all. All they've done is increase the concentration of wealth at the top. So. Well, I just want to... Um point out that um, everyone listening to this show um, the true consumer the true consumer the the, back, the the real backbone of the United States historic, historically has always been the little guy the more money you put back into the pocket of the little guy the more money thus is put back into the economy through spending I mean as far as the elitists go gee how many yachts are sold in America Exactly, and, and this is so. This is also the Republican fallacy of uh, supply side economics. Uh, any good economist, including Adam Smith, uh, will tell you that uh, an economy grows by demand; it doesn't grow by supply. So, so what is supply side economics? So, so, so uh, Reagan was big on this, and of course Bush and, and all of the you know the bankers and the economists today are, are huge on supply side economics, but. They say that if, if you increase the amount of money that goes to a business, then uh, you know, the business will hire people and they will expand. But that's not going to happen. They're not going to expand their production until there's actually demand for the product. Customers have to buy the product to, to get, uh, you know, to increase demand, and then the profits will increase in the economy. If demand is the only way jobs are going to be created. and, and Exactly. And as far as the corporation being the job creators, which I'm so sick of hearing, right. the, the only jobs that, that corporations in America are creating are in mainland China, uh, the Philippines, where they pay, where all, most of the office jobs and customer service jobs in America have been outsourced to the Philippines, where they pay these people one, one, $1 per hour. I, I interviewed Philippine people right from the Philippines. Customer service representatives and general office workers get a lousy, despicable $1 an hour, and companies in China like Foxconn who assemble all those high-tech electronics that Americans love so much, they get a generous $0.32 cents an hour with a long uh, 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 work day, and they live in small little dormitories in the Foxconn complex. It's almost like a city, Fox. It is. It's, it's, and that's, you know, the, I, I have to say, too, that that's another pet peeve of mine. The, I don't like the way that corporations, to say, will uh, outsource jobs. Um, I do think that, you know, in a global economy with fair and free trade, you know, not everything's going to be made in this country. That's a given. 
But I also have to say that to that point, as consumers, you know, it's back to the demand issue. And sometimes we cut our own throats because, you know, um, uh, I see it all the time where people will, they won't spend $2 extra to buy a product that's made in this country. That to save a buck or to save two bucks, they'll buy the Chinese product or the, or, or, you know, whatever the, the cheapest outsource. That starts at home. If you as a consumer start buying American products, well, you know, then that increases the demand for them and we'll have those jobs here in the States. Well, There's well, a com company now in Detroit that's used the, some old automotive part factories and they're making flat screen high definition TVs. And I tell you right now, I don't need one, but when, uh, when the next time I need a flat screen TV, that's the brand I'm going to buy because I'm going to support the company that's actually making them in the US. In the US well, well, Foxconn in China is a Republican's dream because if anybody is caught starting a union, they're thrown in prison for 12 years. I mean, the, the Republicans are always been have always been anti-union, but Republicans want a, a corporate plutocracy and they want to bring back slavery. They would do it in a heartbeat if they could get away with it. No, they're you opposed know. to minimum wage. They don't believe there should be a minimum wage. They don't believe in minimum wage. They, minimum wage. they want the rest of us to fight over the jobs, uh, and, and they'll, they'll hire the lowest bidder so that they can put more money in their, their pockets. If you see the anti, the rapid anti-union sentiment in Wisconsin with Scott Walker, that's just, you know, I mean, that's just a classic symbol of, that's what the rest of them are afraid to say. Chris Christie's another one. You would probably love to see that. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, made the deal down here in Georgia. I mean, they're rapidly pro-business and anti-consumer. Well, the, uh, that's not the way to go. No, no. Well, well the Republicans, the right-wing Republicans, they hate the immigrant, especially immigrants of color. They're always uh, going on and on about illegal immigration, but they would, but they love to hire the illegal south of the border immigrant of color if he, they can get them to work for them for less than minimum wage or practically nothing. They then they like the immigrant of color uh, of let's say from Mexico. They uh, I mean you know to manicure their their lawns to clean their pools to. To, to be maids and servants, to clean their homes, to be, maybe to cook for them. You know, when they can get when they can get labor dirt cheap, then they love the immigrant of color. But other than that, they always want to deport everybody. Um, yeah, that's, so that's, I mean, I think that um, uh, you, have to, you have to choose your line in the sand. You're either, you know, if, if, if you, you don't need to be a hypocrite. If, if you have that philosophy that, you know, you're, you're, uh, you don't think... Uh, we should have uh, this illegal immigrant problem. Now, you know, I have my own opinions on that, and I really think if you're coming here, you know, my, my ancestors uh, were all immigrants. Yours were, uh, yes. unless you're Native American, uh, then, uh, you know, you're a recent, uh, recently related to an immigrant. Even the Native Americans crossed the Barren Strait at some point. But, you know, I, I do believe that it has to be a legal process. I think you need to follow the, 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 the legal prescriptions that are in place to become a U.S. citizen. Um, but at the same time, you know, the Republicans are so rapidly against it. Um, you know, let's, uh, let it, let, hey, we've got all these jobs that the illegal immigrants are filling. Um, and, and as consumers, you know, we're going to have to be willing to pay more money if you want to pay somebody a decent wage to, to go out there and, and, you know, and work in agriculture and some of the other jobs that are out there. So. Yeah, people need a living wage. They need to make a living wage. And companies should make a fair profit, not, not a... a, a an you know, but, 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 you know, and as part of my, my rabid liberal philosophy, I think we need to hold ourselves more accountable as well. It's not it's easy to blame a corporation and I'm not trying to let them off the hook, but I'm saying as consumers as well, you know, um, again I, 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 I think you know we probably need to pay more to, to agricultural workers, but that may mean that we're gonna have to pay five bucks a pound for tomatoes instead of at the supermarket instead of three. A lot of people are not gonna like that. They don't look at the total picture picture. So you have to even decide, do you want to institute some form of program to allow more immigrants into the country to take these jobs? Or, you know, which, or, or do you want to keep on going dishonestly as we do today and say that we don't want them in the country, but we want to let, you know, we want, to, we want the fruits of their labor. So we, you can't have it both ways, I don't think. Right. Now, are you, uh, I'm sure you're aware of this, and I bet many of the listeners are not that some of the Democrats have voted to extend the G.W. Bush tax cuts for the rich. They have. Many they have. have. They have the, there's a class of blue dog Democrats, mostly in the South, that are almost uh, you know, Republicans in, 
in sheep's clothing. But when you have the opposite, too, up north, you've got some Republicans, like I think of Lincoln Chafee in Rhode Island, who's really a Democrat. Dodd, you know, Senator yeah, Dodd and Marcus of Connecticut, I believe. Dodd is a, Dodd is a Democrat, but... Uh, I, I, th I think even the... Uh, I think even what's shocking is some of the progressive Democrats, like Senator Al Franken, Frankenberry, with air of Minnesota, uh, and I, I don't know how true this is, but Bernie Sanders, the both of them, kind of like voted for something recently concerning uh, a, 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 a food bill that has something to do with labeling, honest labeling. On, on American food products, people have the right to know where their food comes from, if it's right. genetically modified, or uh, and what's in their foods. It, something that's that's pro-consumer. I I don't know exactly what it is, but they voted with the right wing on this, and and I'm I'm it just dawned on me, well, it dawned on me last year actually that many Democrats are paid off also in terms of their their campaigns by the fat cats and uh, you know they sold out they they sold out their voters the, the, the progressives that that run progressive sold out their voters and um, it, it, you know people trickle down uh, economics uh, Reaganomics of the 1980s never yeah. never worked it was never meant to right. work I believe it is siphon up economics not not trickle down economics yeah, up no, to the it was the other way around. It wasn't so trickle down never worked. But what worked for Reagan was that uh, he cut taxes and increased the deficit, which put more money in everybody's hand, but, hands. But the big thing was that um, he uh, radically increased defense spending, uh, and that that actually at that point served as a, uh, a stimulus to the economy. I think the economy was already in recovery, uh, which was good for him, but. Uh, yeah. Uh, but but that massive influx of uh, influx of spending into the economy from the defense spending had had a big uh, big share in, 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 in the improvements we saw in the eighties as well. So, but that is demand side. That's not supply side because you know the government's buying products, high priced, uh, obscenely overpriced uh, military equipment, uh, and then uh, workers are paid and they spend the money and then through the multiplier effect it works its way throughout the economy. But it, it does that not by uh, uh, cutting taxes for the richest that they're going to bank. It does it by uh, putting money in the pockets of those that are going to spend it and having that just reverberate like a wave throughout the entire economy because I spend money you know, at your bakery and then you go spend it at Walmart and then somebody there uh, gets um, spends money somewhere else or whatever. But uh, uh, that's the way to to, uh, well, to want to work your magic on the economy. You know, the mil of course, the military budget is is astronomically overinflated. If you took if you took a, a fraction of what they spent on the military, you could probably pay off the deficit and end homeless homelessness and take care of the poor, and probably most likely save Social Security all in one shot if you trim down the waste in the military. But the funny thing, John, is that that uh, Republicans, they hate welfare when it comes to helping the poor and the little guy. So they hate social programs, even Social Security. But welfare, welfare for the rich in terms of subsidies and Wall Street bailouts, oh, that's okay for the Republicans. Oh, absolutely. They're all in favor of corporate welfare. And just another recent classic example, I don't know if you saw this, but... So uh, the Red Sox pitcher, Kurt Schoen, rabid Republican, uh, constantly talking about uh, how he doesn't want the government people's lives and uh, government shouldn't be spending money and all this. Well, he took a $75 million loan guarantee to start a software uh, company from the state of Rhode Island, and the company's going under, and uh, so now the, the taxpayers of the state of Rhode Island are uh, on the hook for $75 million thanks to radical Republican Kurt Schilling. So here's a guy that goes out and tries to start a business, nothing wrong with that, that's the American way, but does it with somebody else's money, loses it. He didn't do it with his money, so he's not an achiever. We hear this all the time about the achievers. Had he made the money, he wouldn't be the achiever. People would put up that $75 million did. And ultimately, it's the, the people of the state of Rhode Island. So while you know the poor... Uh, can't get uh, food stamps because, uh, you know, that they, they, they probably need. And yeah, there's abuse in these programs. We all know that. But hell, there's abuse in, 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 
there's more rampant abuse in these in these programs that the government runs for the richest at the top. Yeah. So so he's opposed to somebody getting food stamps, but he's got no problem with taking seventy five million dollars from the taxpayers of Rhode Island. There's a, the population of Rhode Island is about a million, so that's like taking seventy five dollars out of the pocket of every single Rhode Islander uh, for his software company. You know, come on, where this hypocrisy is just—it's ridiculous. Yeah, they 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 use other people's money. The uh, uh, a lot of uh, the so-called uh, hard-working, upper-class, high-income people. A lot, a lot of them were silver spooners, and uh, you know they they don't earn their money. They, they 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 might earn their first million, but after that, their money is making money for them, and uh, you know it can't can't have this double standard. Yeah, well, yeah. Fair, no welfare you know, for the I'm poor. Not, I, I don't believe in uh, excessive taxation. You know, it, we, at one point in this country, we had a ninety percent income tax rate on the wealthiest. That's confiscatory. I don't, I don't, I don't uh, support that at all. I don't think that's what it's about. I think people need to be taxed fairly, though. And uh, you know, we have, as you were talking, alluding to earlier with the military budget. Yeah, it's bloated. It's got to be cut. It's including if you when you factor the wars in, you're looking at about seven hundred billion dollars a year. We far outstrip. You could take, you know, some of the biggest industrial nations in the world, stack them together, and their military budgets still don't come close to ours. And the fact of the matter is, if you look at things historically, you know, the great powers throughout history, uh, the Roman Empire, Great Britain, Spain, they were in the same position we're in now. You get to this point of imperial overstretch. We've got bases all over the world, and you know what? We can't pay for that anymore. It's time to bring the troops home. It's time to shut the bases down. I'm not saying we shouldn't be part of NATO. You know, I, I, I strongly support that. We should be part of NATO. We should have, a, have an expeditionary force over there. But I don't really think anytime soon that the, the Russians are going to get ready to invade uh, Western Europe. That may have been, uh, you know, a threat during the Soviet era. But, hey, guess what? The, uh, the Cold War ended. It's time to bring a lot of the troops home. And we need to do that all over the world. We just can't afford to be the world's policeman. And, 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 this is, and this is also a special Memorial Day weekend message you just heard from John Starodumsky. But, John, I think it's all about war profiteering and oil, to be Absolutely. honest with you. I agree. I think a lot of the, the, the reason is because we, when we have, you have those huge defense budgets, a lot of people you know, that are friendly to the, uh, the Republican administration is being led, and Democratic, too, I'm sure. You know, they make a lot of money off of that, but it's not good for, for the rest of us. And, and to be fair, the deficit problem in this country, you can't solve it all. You know, we have trillion dollar deficits. I, if you look at that $700 billion defense budget, you could stop uh, every single sentiment and we still would have a budget deficit. But you have to start by cutting there. I think we can't do that anymore. We can't be the, the power that we've been. You have to raise taxes again for sure. I'm not wealthy. Um, they, you have to reverse the trend, uh, get them back to the Clinton era rates. Uh, but then, you know, even at that, I don't think that's going to be enough. Uh, and uh, we're going to have to make some hard choices, but the rest of us are going to have to pay uh, a little bit more income taxes, too. But you know what? That's what we got to do. We can't we can't run these deficits the way we're doing today. So. Well, it has, it has to start at the top. Well, these <laughs> political leaders, speaking of starting at the top, these so-called public servants like your Congress and your senators, or even this, uh, this bloated, obese dictator we have, this fascist we have up here in New Jersey, Chris, Crisco Christie. I, I named him Crisco as, as his middle name. He, uh, they make like $175,000 a year, give or take, with, with, with free, with the best health care and, and great pensions and everything. Now, why must they get this much of the middle class tax dollar if they're supposed to be public servants. You know, it's like, uh, why don't they take a, t a pay cut? Why, why do everyone else have to make sacrifices? Why does the little guy have to make sacrifices, Chris Christie? Well, John, um, what really gets under my skin, uh, aside from the usual, you know, attitude of the Republicans, do as I say, not as I do, you know, uh, 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 the double standard, uh, everything for the elitists and nothing for the for the poor, enslave the poor. It's like the old uh, days of feudalism. You know, uh, uh, nothing is new under the sun. Human nature is wicked, and uh, it was always corruptible and, and corrupt. And, and it seems like history is repeating itself. But what irks me, what really gets me un gets under my skin, is how the middle class, who obviously have the tax burden 
continue to believe the right-wing Tea Party and Republican false propaganda and lies that everything is, to, everything is the fault of progressive liberal Democrats, and they keep on talking about, like Reagan did, tax and spend. Well, tax and spend, tax and spend liberals, it's all there for. No, it is the fact that in the 1980s, Ronald Reagan shifted the tax burden from the rich to the middle class, and I guess the poor in terms of consumption, you know, taxes, sales taxes, but yeah. Reagan is the one that shifted the tax burden to the little guy from the rich, and before Reagan, I mean, you know, during Eis uh, uh, Truman and Eisenhower, we had like a 91 or 92, I forgot, a percent tax rate on the rich, and the economy was booming. I yeah, think it was 91%. I don't think it's fair to take away 90% of somebody's earnings. I don't care how much you make. But, but you're right. I mean, it's not fair also to, to, to uh, start uh, taking less and less and less from, from those with the most. You know, there, there's an ability to pay principle that, that applies to those that have the most. And in my opinion, you know, if, if, if you're making that much money, you're benefiting from society far more than the guy that's working for minimum wage. What's he getting out of it, right? Um, you know, you, if you want to pay for, for uh, uh, all of the government services that allow you to make that money. And, and you know, we hear this about government as an impediment uh, in, in, instead of a facilitator all the time. It's simply not true, because I don't care how good your business is. You know, without, the, without a lot of the, the, the publicly funded highways and uh, communication infrastructure and other things that, that you know, that we have, um, you're not going to make that money. You're not going to make that. Bill Gates and, and Steve Jobs, they didn't make their money on their own way. Lots of people working for them to help them. Well, uh, they, they, yeah, Bill, Bill Gates, they, they, were, they, were both, they were both more progressive. They were, they were more on the Warren Buffett line as far as, uh, you know, what they were willing to, uh, uh, you know, to, uh, to pay as far as taxes and what they think they should pay. Well, Bill Gates, I mean, yeah. Uh, here we go again, another kind of people line, so the Warren Buffett thing. So Warren Buffett says he, he thinks he, he should pay more taxes. He sees what's going on in this country. He sees what's wrong. So right forward-thinking people, you know, like Buffett, uh, you know, they get chastised by the Republicans will tell Warren Buffett to write a check. That's not going to do it. You can't do it with one person. You need the entire class uh, of, uh, you know, citizens in that income bracket to pony up and pay their fair share. Then again, as I said before, I really think that the middle class and the rest of us are going to have to pay more too. You know, that's just the way it is. If we want the level of services that our government gives us, you know, we got to cut. We, we, then we got to pay for it. Well, spending I, I, cuts have to be part of it too, but we're, I mean, spending cuts alone are not going to do it, and we're going to have to pay more taxes. Well, I, I think the tax burden should honestly be put put uh, back on the shoulders of the rich, like old yeah. day, like old days. And uh, I think uh, entrepreneurs and small businesses, including mom and pop businesses, which were which were the backbone of the U.S. economy, should have all the tax breaks and pay. Should, they should get the same tax breaks that the rich have gotten in the past 30 some odd years. It sure. should be totally shifted back onto the shoulders of the rich and anybody who, uh, who's earning like 250000 a year and up or more so, you know, upper, upper level uh, into the 1%. And all the breaks that the rich have enjoyed for 30 years should be with the middle class so we could rebuild Main Street and stop giving welfare to Wall Street. And, and like in the old days, America depended on Main Street, small businesses, entrepreneurs. And my, my last statement before I close, because I have to go, I'm invited to a, a family barbecue. I want to ask uh, uh, America that's listening and watching this show, what would you trust more to run this country? Big business or big government? I trust big government before I would trust big business. A lot of Republicans brag about uh, saying, you know, oh, we need to uh, elect a CEO of a, of a huge successful company. That they know how to run this country. Oh, sure. Talk about slavery coming back. <laughs> There's no, there's no sleazier slime ball that is, uh, gr there's no greedy, more greedy individual 
uh, 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 than a corporate American CEO. So that's all I have to say. That's my closing statement. And uh, I do trust big government way before I, tr I trust a corporate American CEO. And uh, their God is money and the church is their bank. Yeah, and that's that is agree. And, and, and I'll, I'll be brief just to close too, James. Yes, but I would just, I would ask, uh, you know, when you uh, when you do your voting, consider that the the, the party uh, that's going to represent uh, the, the middle class uh, and, uh, and the working class and the poor, uh, and not the the uh, the super rich with, with with the most money. Think about. You know, when you're out there, buy that American product, support American jobs, support American unions, and, uh, you know, it, it speak with, you know, put your money where your mouth is. And, and, you know, yeah, we may have to pay a little more on taxes, but let's get this deficit thing under control. Let's start with those that have the most to give, the, the right thing with taxes, but we've all got to kick in and do our share. We can't just always blame the other guy and put it in his corner. But again, I think it all starts next time you're at Walmart, at Home Depot, or wherever. If it's five bucks or ten bucks or twenty bucks more for that American made product, that's let's let's go ahead and buy that. Let's let's yeah. well, let's, I, let's start there. And I, I think, think the rest of it will all come together. Well so. unf unfortunately our leaders have to set the example and they're not doing it. And uh that military budget, oh that's gotta get trimmed. Number it one does. agenda and no more uh, uh welfare for the rich, no more uh uh, uh Wall Street bailouts. And we got to start somewhere, but you know what? I have a feeling, John, it's not going to be with the two-party system. We have to find and support a good, progressive, independent. And the problem is that the American media, which is also paid off by uh, corporations, does never seems to invite the independent candidates to the debates. It used to be back in the day when the League of uh, uh, Women Voters, I believe, ran the debates. But you don't see any independents um, well, invited to debates. I never. Uh, I think I remember the Reagan, uh, John Anderson was running and he was in the debates, and I certainly remember Clinton uh, and, and uh, Ross Perot. Okay. I voted. I voted for Ross Perot twice. I didn't vote for Clinton, uh, but uh, I, I agree. I think we need a third party. I think this is getting out of hand. And the media needs to uh, interview independents, and America needs to get to know who are the independents. Correct. That are out there. Uh, I heard there's a guy named Rocky Anderson, among others, uh, here in 2012. But who? Nobody knows these people because well, the media only shoves the mic in front of Republicans. It seems like the U.S. media only cares about what the right wing is saying. Well, I'll okay. tell you. You know, my dad ran for president uh, as an independent, and you can, you know, you can Google or Bing that um, John Steradamski president. You'll see his declaration of candidates and papers in Rhode Island and all that. Um, he knew he wasn't going to win. Uh, he knew he didn't have a chance, but he, his his, his, his uh, philosophy was that uh, it was time for the people to stand up and, and and say, you know, this is a free country and we can all do this, uh, and get his get his opinion out. And, and uh, okay. that's that was his thing, and uh, you know he did it. And uh, okay. I think I think that's you know that's what this country needs more of. That, so. Well, I want uh, one closing statement before I say goodbye. Happy Memorial Day weekend. It's not about, you know, getting buzz and barbecuing and, and gorging yourself with barbecue. Just think about all the uh, military service personnel that lost their lives in America to defend your freedom. And uh, think about all of them, in, you know, throughout history of the United States, Absolutely. all the people have died. And remember one thing that, that applies to today for Memorial Day weekend. I think it is absolutely despicable that 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 the men and women who served in Iraq and Afghanistan, when they return to the United States, have to live in tents in the woods, like in Florida. It is absolutely despicable that the VA hospitals are turning their back on on these war veterans, and no no military uh, individual that comes back from a war should have to live in a damn tent no, like, a, like a homeless person or be homeless or, or, or sleep in a, in a rent a car or any. It's despicable. You should be ashamed of yourself, uh, uh, United States government. Yeah. for and this, the yeah. businesses that Republicans worship, they should be standing up in, standing in a line to hire these veterans because these guys and gals, I mean, they sacrificed years of their career and a lot more than that. Um, 
to uh, uh, and to, to go out there and serve and put themselves in harm's way. So you know, I mean, they need, they deserve to be at the front of the line for hiring. Um, yeah. they, they shouldn't have any problems getting a job. It, that that is a, a travesty of immense proportion. Absolutely, John. All right, thank you for to joining me. This has been progressive discussions on location with John Starodumsky from from uh, the Peach State of Georgia. John, thank you very much for joining Thanks, me Bye. on this Memorial Day weekend.